Hi, this is Amin, and in this video, I'm going to talk about LTE procedure, which consists of four parts. So we have power on, and then random access, attach, and tracking area update. So let's take a look at all of them one by one. The first thing is uh, LTE architecture. I have a video on my channel about uh, the access network, so we know about S1 and X2. So let's go further. Imagine at first your cell phone is off, so the cell phone uh, doesn't have any idea about the location. It could be you know, in Canada, in US, Europe, Asia, wherever. As you turn it on, it searches for beacon. It's kind of synchronization signal. So at first it finds PSS, primary synchronization signal. And uh, five seconds after that, SSS, secondary information signal. So the PSS contains uh, timing of the cell and it has a start and end of uh, ones and zeros and also uh, it is there to make sure time uh, clock of the UE and the inner B are lined up. So after that, uh, it, there is a request we call it attach request from UE goes to inner B. Uh, always in all of the networking stuff and wherever we know there is a master at the top of the system and it's going to serve the users based on a contention mechanism. For example, home Wi-Fi router, uh, it uses a polling system. There are users and the home Wi-Fi say, uh, says, you can use this net now, it's your time, now it's your time, and then this is your time, your time. Uh, imagine, a, imagine an inode B with 100 users. So this contention mechanism will be failed and will, will lead uh, to lots of latency. What is the solution? Solution is random access based on uh, 64 orthogonal codes. We call that random access preambles. We know that in LT we have OFDMA technology, which is going to assign resource blocks to the users, and each one bandwidth is uh, 20 kilohertz. So the UE sends connection requests towards inodb and in a BSN's uh, RRC connection request setup, and the UE sends RRC connection request setup completed. So we have the RRC bearer here, and then the message goes towards the MME. MME see the message, this is attached request, sends that to the HSS, and from HSS goes towards PCRF, and PCRF do some uh, sort of authentication and encryption, and that encryption uh, will add additional overhead to the system and cause bandwidth usage, and then the UE will attach. So, now you're gonna use your UE. Again, uh, send a request. We call that a PDN connectivity request, uh, which uh, contains two things. The first thing is QCI. B QCI is a number, and based on that QCI, PCRF uh, will assign QoS to the service and APN. So, what is the APN? The APN is uh, your destination, the access point name. So, if you want to make a call, your APN is IMS. If you want to surf the net, for example, your APN could be, I don't know, YouTube.ca. So you have your NAS messaging directly from UE to MME, and MME sends that via S11 to SGW. And MME uh, says to SGW, hey, there's someone uh, who wants to surf the net. And SGW sends that to the PGW and say, hey, there's someone who wants to surf the net. And PGW accept that message and message back via this bearer, S5S8 bearer, and SGW make another bearer, S1U, from SGW towards inode B. And so we have three bearers, S5S8, S1U, and uh, RRC bearer to have EPS bearer, which is somehow like a tunnel, from the UE to the net. So this is the process of attach and uh, access network and power on. So we know about them, but what will happen if we change our location? If you take a closer look at that, this is, imagine you are here, for example, you are at home, and you are not moving, so, so far so good. But what will happen if you are in a car, 
from one tracking area to another. Uh, after MIB, you know, when you first attach to the system, you receive the MIB. This is the first block, master information block, which has information about PLMN and also whatever is important from inot B to the UE, for example, frequency. And PLMN is public land mobile network, which contains MNC and MCC, that are a six unique digits uh, related to the carrier's broadcasting. So after that, we'll receive SIB1, SIB2, SIB2, and the rest of them. And SIB1 uh, contains timing of the rest of them. And all of them, you know, they have tracking area number. As the UE is always, UE is always listening uh, to the broadcasting messages, as the SIB changes the tracking area, UE will be alerted about that. So previously, MME set my previous tracking area. Now it changed. Uh, what will happen to me? I'm not going to receive any phone call, any text. What am I supposed to do? UE uh, will send a message towards MME. Uh, we call that tracking area update request. And it contains someone like this. Hi, this is me with Team Z, like this. My previous tracking area number was something, and my current tracking area is this. And I have a uh, tracking area update request. And as this is the responsibility of MME, so this is another NAS messaging, non access stratum. So MME sends that towards, uh, Inod sends that towards MME, MME do some sort of authentication and to check the message. Uh, came from the right place and I update the tracking area and sends the tracking area updated complete towards the UE and uh, so we've set all of them just to recap if we take a look at this flowchart uh, there are three conditions we are deregister connected or idle Deregister, EMM deregister, EPS, uh, Mobility Management deregister, is the situation that the cell phone is off. As you turn it on, we have attach, so we are connected to the system after that, and we have the update. If we do not, if we do not use that, the cell phone, we have MME connection release, and it's going towards being idle. And from idle state, whenever you want to use that, you have connection reactivation, and whenever you turn your cell phone off in either connected or idle it's uh, it calls detach so it's going to be detached from the system so anyway this is the thing that i wanted to say about lte procedure about each one and i hope you enjoyed and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and bye everyone